Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel. And in this installment of 10 Tastes for Whiskey Drinkers, we are focusing on malted barley distillate that's aged and matured in new charred American oak. And it's very distinctive. So in this series, we're trying to go through a few things, list a few things, highlight a few things that can help your whiskey tasting journey. And most of these things are aimed at bourbon drinkers or aimed at scotch drinkers. And this one is really aimed at scotch drinkers because the juice in these bottles is distilled from malted barley mash. So we're starting off with three kinds of malt here three different brands, three different American distilleries that do single malts. So they're all famous for being American single malt, but they are aged and matured in new American oak. And that gives it a totally different character than Scotch has. So I recognize some of the Scotch-like characteristics and I have just poured Westland thoughtfully made American single malt, non-chill filtered, no coloring added. Westland Distillery, Seattle, Washington, 46% alcohol by volume. And they also have a peated version and they have a sherry wood version. But this is just a plain charred new American oak barrel that it's aged in. And I don't think they say how long, but it's a craft distillery in Washington state. And I'm gonna give you some of the notes on all three of these uh, distilleries and explain how they're different than scotch, which is the same juice, which is usually matured in um, use American bourbon barrels, ex bourbon barrels, or use sherry barrels, ex sherry barrels from Spain. So the Westland has plenty of ABV, and I'm not getting a lot on the on the nose. Doesn't smell especially malty to me. So this is in the blind tasting, so I'm not going to spend all day trying to pick out notes or anything, but it doesn't smell malty to me. So I will go ahead and taste. Wow. It's somewhat malty, but there's sweet vanilla, something herbal and green, grassy, not in an unpleasant way. It's not sappy or green or youthful in the bad way. It's interesting and herbal and woody. There's a tiny bit of bitterness at the end of that finish, but it's not bad. It's not off-putting. So there's something in here much more woody than a typical Scotch has. His tasting notes. This is interesting. I like it. I've always liked that. And I bought the other expressions. The Peter one's good. The Sherry Wood's good. So these are nice, but these are steep. This craft distillery uh, is charging about a hundred bucks a bottle for this stuff. The Sherry Wood and the Pete certainly are. And the regular American malt might be a little bit less, but I, I haven't bought it lately. This, bit, this bottle's probably two years old. I have liked it all the way through, but it has got a strong note of wood. It is oaky. It goes way past any scotch barrel influence that I've tasted in terms of the oak notes. Long-term maturation in sherry barrels in Scotland for 12 or 14 or 16, 18 years might be the only comparison that I can think of in Scotch, where the cask has that much influence on it. So this is 
nice, pleasant. I like it. The oak is strong, but the the I think the malted barley spirit stands up to it. It's, it's a good balance. They're very well matched. So that's that's the first one. Now the second one is Stranahan's Colorado Whiskey. And they don't say it very plainly on the label, but if you search it all over and read it, you find out it's a single malt. And the kinds of things I hear is that the demand went up so quickly that when they were starting out, it was pretty easy for them to age their juice for three or four years. And just a few years later, by the time I bought this bottle, they were only aging it for two years or even less. And in Colorado, that's possible. That works. But I've always gotten just more wood, more oak on this product than on uh, other whiskeys I was tasting at the time. When I bought this bottle two years ago, I didn't really understand that much about what's in bourbon, what's in scotch what all the differences are, what kind of flavor profiles you're looking at. And every time I drank this, I kept going, wow, why does that remind me of a scotch? It's so woody and oaky, but why does it remind me of a scotch? When I finally figured out the barley thing versus corn, rye, and other things than American bourbon, it finally hit me. Oh, oh, these are American single malts that are, they're, it's our version of scotch. It's our version of malted barley spirits. And we do totally different things to them. We can't do anything else in this country with oak and the climate that we have here, or climates. You know, there's only 10 or 15 different climates we can uh, put our stuff in. So on the nose, once again, I don't get a lot telling me about what's in the glass. It doesn't predict what I'm gonna taste. I get ethanol. The malt is mild. I get slight hints of the wood notes that I might be tasting later, but it's nothing strong. Nothing's making you go, oh, I know what this is gonna be. So it is uh, not light after aging two or three years. In the American oak, it picks up some color. And yeah, the nose is just nothing to me. I can tell there's ethanol. It's a little woody. That's about all I get. The palate is totally different. I get lots of wood. It is oaky. It makes you think it's kind of old. It's got some age. It's a little different in character than this thing is. But this is another, this is 47% ABV. <clears throat> I got it on sale at a local grocery store. This is, really runs about 50 bucks in my area, but 35.79 back then because it was in a grocery store frequented by little old ladies who don't understand strain of hands or what they're trying to do here. So it didn't sell and they're getting rid of it. I said, I'll be happy to take everything you've got. So this is Woody, Woody, Woody. There are some malt characteristics, but it's overtaken by the oak. And as I was drinking it the first couple of years, it was like, ah, oh, there's something Scotch-like about that. But I never really figured it out back then. And now I know what it is. It's basically over-oaked malted barley distillate, which has its own kind of appeal. It's really interesting. It's really good. But it's a night and day difference compared to Scotch. So the new oak exerts a strong influence on the flavor, on the palate. It's definitely vanilla. There's a sweetness to it. There's a bitterness in the finish. It's not real strong. It's not the biggest note by far. 
but there's a little bitterness there. So the wood just kind of takes over the spirit. Some of the friendly notes of the malt are there, but malt is kind of a delicate thing and it's pretty easy to overrun it with other flavors. And the oak barrels kind of overrun it. It's not wildly out of balance, it's just tilted in favor of the oak. Okay, I don't want to necessarily finish that glass, but Stranahan's is one of my favorite. This is probably my third bottle here. And that's now counting uh, the Diamond Peak from Stranahan's, which is the same juice, just older. So it's more oaky. You have a black label, the juice is darker, and you, when you taste this, it's just more oak. So it is woody times two. This is probably four years old. For sure, real years, four, four years. And the uh, stuff's a little bit darker. I don't necessarily smell the oak. Smell the age or the greater influence on the nose. Nope, my nose is pretty immune to a lot of things. But this, okay, let's taste. Whoa, it's oaky. Oak, oak, oak. I I'm, can't say I get any malt notes at all. The wood, is, and you know, it's like this flavor, but the wood is amped up a little bit, and the malt, as little as I got, is ramped down. And it's not unpleasant at all. It's not bitter, it's not overdone. There's plenty of vanillas, plenty of sweetness, caramels from the toasted oak or charred oak or whatever they do to their barrels. I'm not sure that I've read it anywhere. But this is overtaking the spirit. It's stronger than the malt spirit that's been distilled. I get ethanol. I get vanilla. Nothing stands out as malty. So the wood's just taken over the whole place. And it's strangely appealing. So this is a favorite among American whiskey drinkers. And now the bad boy. This is Balcones, Texas single malt whiskey, classic edition, 53% alcohol by volume. So some of these are, they're way less than three years old. They can get away with doing it for so this stuff is dark two or three years it's plenty of aging time for it might be too much but they have a single malt pot still probably i'm sure you can't see it but i got a balconist glass while i was at the distillery i've seen how they distill how they grind and mash and ferment and all that stuff and i've had bought some of the distillery only expressions of some of their other things. So this isn't the only thing they do, but when they put it in new oak, it ages fast and it gets oaky, oaky, oaky beyond these even. So I'm holding this up as an extreme. I get, I didn't get malt on the nose, but there's kind of a sagebrush, a, a southwestern desert, something old and dusty. And you get the same thing on the palate. There are not malt notes, but there are sweet, vanilla, toasted wood, toasted grain, toasted <laughs> wood. This is sagebrushy and tumbleweeds blowing around in the desert. It's a dry place. So 
the delicate spirit of the malted barley that comes off the still is kind of roughly handled, manhandled, uh, thrown around a little bit and stuffed into this terrible climate that's so different than Scotland. But what comes out is very interesting, unique, very drinkable, very interesting to Scotch drinkers. Yeah, it is nothing like these guys. And it's a bit stronger than the flavor that these things have picked up in their barrels. This is the strongest one I've come across. And it's so strange that the uh, relatively delicate spirit can uh, take this kind of aging in this kind of barrel in this area and come out okay. It's way out of balance, but it's it works. I don't really detect any malt notes. There's nothing that a malt drinker would be able to hang their hat on, I don't think. But it's a pleasant experience. It's sweet, it's woody, it's pleasant, and there's vanilla. I don't know what to claim besides those things, but it's woody, woody, woody. Oak, oak, oak. Wood, wood, wood. And then this little extra Texas thing that is not present in these other malts. So if you can get your hands on any of these as an American bourbon drinker, they are, they tell, they teach you much about oak. And if you're a Scotch drinker or in the UK, you can get a couple of these things. They're around and you can uh, learn much about American oak. So if you think the videos you're seeing here are useful, interesting, helpful in any way, please give this video a thumbs up. Please leave a comment or a question down below. Subscribe to the channel and click on that bell to get notified when we release new ones, usually Mondays and Thursdays. So I hope you enjoy whatever malt or bourbon you're drinking or whiskey. And that's all for now. Thank you.